Midland, Odessa, and Big Spring. This is ABC Big 2 News at 10. Now at 10, President Biden is heading home tonight as fallout continues from his controversial trip to Saudi Arabia and fallout from that friendly fist bump with the Saudi Crown Prince. Saudi Arabia is now at the center of the president's efforts to shore up global oil markets. Good evening and thank you for joining us on this Saturday night. I'm Rob Tuke. Now tonight, the White House is defending the president's meeting and that trip. ABC's Mary Bruce leads us off tonight with this report. President Biden tonight making his way back home, but his controversial visit still sending shockwaves. Biden's facing blowback for that fist bump seen around the world. The highly choreographed greeting with Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, the man the U.S. concluded approved of the brutal killing of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. After Biden as a candidate vowed to punish Saudi Arabia, the kingdom was eager to share these images of their warm welcome. Tonight, the White House is defending the trip with pressing spokesman John Kirby. But was it worth it? Think about uh, so many national interests here in this region. You're not going to advance those interests if you just stay at home and try to phone it in. You have to actually go and speak to leaders and be on the ground to try to make a difference. The president says he brought up Khashoggi at the very top of the meeting. I said very straightforwardly, for an American president to be silent on an issue of human rights, is this consistent with, inconsistent with who we are and who I am? But Khashoggi's fiance tweeting, the blood of MBS's next victim is on your hands. I'm sorry she feels that way. I was straightforward back then. I was straightforward today. Biden knew he would be criticized for the trip, but it was a risk he was willing to take to try in part to lower gas prices at home. I'm doing all I can to increase the supply for the United States of America, which I expect to happen. But he left Saudi Arabia with no concrete announcement or pledge to boost supply. Is it possible we could see an announcement uh, that more oil might be flowing to the U.S. in the next couple months? Weeks? Saudi Arabia has uh, a policy of uh, maintaining stability in oil markets. Saudi Arabia has a policy of uh, working to ensure adequate supplies of, of crude oil in the oil markets. We do that through. And that was Mary Bruce reporting. Now at the southern border, border crossings have hit a new record level. The U.S. Customs and Border Protection released its monthly operational report for the month of June, revealing they saw more than 207 thousand encounters at the border. The report also showed a record-setting number of terrorist sightings, an increased number of unaccompanied children and illegal drugs passing through. Now this is the fourth straight month where the report showed more than 200,000 encounters. And Midland Police is still investigating a standoff from last night. ABC Big 2 was on scene when a heavy police presence surrounded a home on St. Andrew's Drive in Midland, near Midland Drive and Parker Elementary School. The standoff lasted nearly three hours and forced evacuations. And as we wait for details and an update from the city, you can follow any developments we have on yourbasin.com. We turn now to the new findings in the investigation of the Uvalde school massacre. Sources tell ABC News that Uvalde city officials tried to convince the director of DPS to publicly paint a more positive picture of the law enforcement response. This comes as the victim's families brace for the release tomorrow of a major report on what exactly happened. Here's ABC senior investigative reporter Aaron Katursky. Tonight, with families bracing to hear the findings of a state investigation into the school massacre, ABC News has confirmed local leaders tried unsuccessfully to convince the head of the Texas State Police to paint a more positive picture of the police response. In a secret meeting first described by the New York Times, law enforcement sources said Uvalde officials gave Colonel Stephen McCraw a more positive narrative that contradicted what he had said publicly about officers' failure to confront the shooter. For the benefit of hindsight, where I'm sitting now, of course it was not the right decision, it was a wrong decision, period. There's no, no excuse for that. But Sources told ABC News McCraw refused to change his account. For more than an hour, police remained outside the classrooms, as seen in video obtained by ABC News affiliate KVU and the Austin American Statesman. Teacher Arnulfo Reyes was inside. He was shot twice and lost 11 of his students. It makes me sick. Knowing that I was just a few feet away, it makes me more angry that they waited. 
In less than 24 hours, a Texas House committee will release the most detailed account of the police response yet. Lawmakers have already corrected the false impression of Officer Ruben Ruiz, who was mocked on social media for checking his phone. State Representative Joe Moody said Ruiz is the husband of murdered teacher Eva Morales, who reached out from her classroom while he was on scene to say that she had been shot and was dying. Moody said he could not allow someone who had lost everything to be maligned. And developing tonight at 10 o'clock, the murder of a NASCAR star. Police say Bobby East was killed this week at a California gas station as he was trying to fill up his gas tank. Tonight we're learning more details about the suspect who was killed by police just hours later. Here's ABC's Zoreen Shaw. Tonight, authorities investigating a shocking crime at a California gas station. A former NASCAR star stabbed to death. Authorities say Bobby East was filling up his tank Wednesday in Westminster near Huntington Beach when suddenly he was attacked. In a statement, police say they tried to save East's life at the gas station until paramedics rushed him to a trauma center where he died. The stabbing setting up a manhunt. Police tracking down the suspect Friday, their search warrant resulting in an officer involved shooting, wounding their canine unit dog. Officers arresting Trent Millsap. According to reports, the 27-year-old was homeless. The 37-year-old East, a Torrance native, had been living in Indiana and was a three-time U.S. Auto Club champion and the son of Hall of Fame car builder Bob East. This coming just days after another attack of an athlete by a homeless man. Former Olympic volleyball player Kim Glass claiming she was brutally beaten by a homeless man in Los Angeles. That suspect arrested. And that was Zoreen Shah reporting. Now a dust storm in Montana caused a 21 vehicle pile up on a highway last night. That mass casualty incident, as police called it, left at least six people dead, including two kids. Video, video taken at the scene shows the aftermath wind gusts topped up to 60 miles per hour. And now your forecast first on ABC Big 2 News. And happy Saturday. Now, it was a hot day in the basin, about three degrees warmer, so we totaled at a high of 99 degrees. Usually around this time in July, our average is 96 degrees. A hot day in the basin, but not as hot as how we were back in 1989 when we sat in our triple digits, sitting at 105 degrees. I'll have more of this weekend's forecast later on the show. Back over to you, Rob. Thank you so much, Bridget. And take a look at this. Some nice weather in Alpine today made for a good day in the community. Volunteers with Keep Alpine Beautiful were busy this weekend. Volunteers picked up 375 pounds of trash in the span of one and a half acres. Surface streets and TxDOT roads were also cleaned up. And the West Texas Warbirds had to win one more game tonight to finish undefeated. We have those highlights from the Coliseum up next. And it's a big weekend for Major League Baseball. We're getting a good look at the All-Star Game that's happening this weekend. All that and more coming up in sports. A new Chevy is the smart way to hit the open road this summer. The smart way to road trip and seek new adventures. Go a little farther this summer in a new Chevy. Find new get up and go, find new roads. Well qualified buyers get 2.49% financing on most 2021 and 2022 Chevy SUVs when you finance with GM Financial. New models are arriving daily. Secure yours today. Chevy drives Texas. Find new roads. It's one of the most complex, misunderstood issues that's happening in this country. The average person thinks that it's just a humanitarian crisis or just a drug and criminal crisis. News Nation is about showing exactly what's going on down here from an unbiased perspective. These caravans split off trying to make their way to the U.S. To truly understand the U.S.-Mexico border, you have to be here. And that's what I try to do with my stories. Continue for 72 miles. Sometimes you've got to trust your inner compass. Especially when it's leading you to the Hatch Green Chili Double at what? Rerouting. The Hatch Green Chili Double at... Rerouting. 
Think we can turn that off now? The Hatch Green Chili Double at Whataburger. An all-time favorite with the smooth, smoky heat from Hatch Green Chilies and melty cheese layered on two fresh all-beef patties. Whataburger's Hatch Green Chili Double. Just like you like it. To sunrise catchers and faithful fetchers. To smoke artists and fire dancers. To abuelos and their favoritos. To the next generation of anglers and weekend wranglers. HEB brand products were born and raised to be Texas favorites guaranteed. And they could only come from HEB to Texas with love. The on-demand world has made us all more demanding. Movies don't come out, they're just out. Even instant noodles aren't fast enough. Hey, order ramen. Ordering ramen. So you need the power of complete connectivity with our award-winning internet combined with Optimum Mobile. Voted number one in customer satisfaction. Get both for under $45 a month at SuddenLink.com. SuddenLink is becoming Optimum. Let's reconnect. Get ready for your day with meteorologist Ryan DePhillips. Your local weather authority forecast. Well, it is Saturday night and it's starting to feel even hot, even though we're cooling down. Speaking of hot temperatures, hot in the area. Triple digits in Big Spring at 100 degrees. In Pecos, 100 degrees as well. In Slider, 98. Time with Seminole, Wick as well, and Dryden. And then Presidio sitting pretty close at 100, sitting at 99 degrees. Now, definitely not too bad for today. Hot, but hey, not a triple digit sport today. 99, three degrees warmer than our average at 96. Like I said, a hot day, but at least we're in a triple digits like how we were back in 1989 when we sat at 105 degrees. Taking a look at our lows, they come in warm for that as well by one degree. Sitting at low 74 for today, usually around this time, we're used to 73 degree temperatures, so we will take what we can get because it's going to continue to keep getting hotter. And in this moment right now, about 24 hours ago, we're actually two degrees warmer in Big Spring and in the middle of area and in Snyder. Carlsbad has cooled down by two degrees. Hobbs, Wink, Pecos, Fort Stockton has stayed pretty much the same. And then in Presidio, we are seeing three degrees warmer. Now, currently in this moment, we have gone up two degrees. That's why we're sitting at 88 degrees, a very warm kind of evening. Our humidity is sitting at 27. Our dew point sitting at 50. And our winds are pretty calm, traveling southeast at seven miles per hour. Now, tomorrow morning is going to be pretty, pretty mild as well. 74, we're going to start it off at a mild morning. Our winds will be traveling southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Then we increase by 1 degree by 8 a.m. And then we get into noon. That's when temperatures will increase with a little bit of clouds like we did see for today, sitting at 90 degrees. Then by 5 p.m., that's when we pretty much borderline in that triple digit heat, sitting at 99, a very hot day, and it's also going to be dry. Now, a couple heat tips for everyone. Drink plenty of water, apply sunscreen regularly, and take frequent breaks in the shade. You're definitely going to need that because it is going to be sunny, it's going to be hot, and it's going to be dry. Not only that, but it is going to be windy. We'll be seeing some of that wind occurring around, you know, 8, 9, 10 p.m. And then, you know, with that being said, we're going to have a calm kind of Monday. And then that allergy forecast does show we will be sitting low for our grass and our trees and our molds. And then, you know, that pool day, we will be sitting at a nice and steamy 75, so we'll take what we can get by 5 a.m. Because, hey, 100 degrees by Sunday, pretty much borderlining, 99 in some areas, 100 in the middle of the Desa area. And then we're going to continue on in our triple digits for the rest of the upcoming week. And, you know, I'm trying to bring this fan on over to sports because it's getting pretty hot over there. And now, your ABC Big Two Sports. Well, Los Angeles is gearing up to host its first MLB All-Star Game in four decades. It's just one of the big events in the coming days, including the MLB Draft. ABC's Zoreen Shah previews the important week ahead for Major League Baseball. A new show is coming to Hollywood. Los Angeles is preparing for one of the biggest weeks in baseball. It's packed with suspense. After four years, the All-Star Game returning to Dodger Stadium. It's a sight welcomed by fans and the league because L.A. was supposed to host the 2020 game, but that was canceled because of COVID. The 1-2. Doesn't strike out special. 
special delivery for Otani. Big stars like Shohei Otani, Mookie Betts, and Aaron Judge expected to excite a sold-out crowd. Throw deep to left field. There it goes! See ya! The big draft taking place starting tomorrow. All eyes waiting to see who gets picked first with big expectations that it could be Drew Jones, the son of 10-time Gold Glove winner Andrew Jones. Matt Holliday and Carl Crawford's sons also expected to be drafted this year. But today, the all-star celebrity softball game kicking off the week of festivities. Starring Bad Bunny, Rob Lowe, Simu Lu, and Jojo Siwa. And the home run derby on Monday, headlined by Pete Alonso, is seeking a three-peat after winning the last two contests in 2021 and 2019. The total distance of his last two home run derby wins, stretching 11 miles when laid out consecutively, the same distance from City Field to Yankee Stadium. Okay, so this is the home run derby chain. The person who wins the derby gets this. You can see the gold and the platinum and the crystals all over it. And it's only the third one ever made. Zoreen Shah, ABC News, Los Angeles. All right, thank you, Zoreen. Well, there will be a couple of players from both the Astros and Rangers participating in the All-Star Game. But they have a little bit more baseball to play before then. Both Texas and Houston are home this weekend hosting an AL West rival. So let's start with the Astros and the visiting Oakland A's. Second inning, no score. Base is loaded for Martin Maldonado. He takes this one deep and gone. A grand slam. His ninth homer of the season. Astros up 4-0. In the fourth inning, same score. Chas McCormick drops in a single. Scoring El Adamas Diaz. Houston up 5-0. Sixth inning, same score. Justin Verlander dealing. Sean Murphy, he goes down swinging. Seth Brown, he strikes out swinging. And the former Ranger, Elvis Andrus, chases strike three. Verlander, ten strikeouts through six shutout innings. Astros win 5-0. Right, Rangers hosting the Red Hot Mariners. Second inning, Adam Frazier. A Deep fly ball to shallow left, but Cole Calhoun steals it. That's robbery right there. She'd be under arrest for that one. Big play there. Bottom half of the second inning, one on for Jonah Heim. He lifts a base knock into center field. Nathaniel Lowe comes in to score. Rangers up 1-0. Third inning, Seattle trailing 1-0 with one on. Carlos Santana, a deep shot is gone. A two-run homer, his eighth of the year. Mariners up 2-1. Seventh inning. Same score, Elier Hernandez, a single right up the middle off Eric Swanson. Leonid Tavares just barely beats out the throw at home. Rangers tied at two. Extra innings we go. Tenth inning, same score, J.P. Crawford. That's a base hit off Brett Martin. Sam Haggerty scores, and the Mariners win their 13th straight, 3-2. to two. All right, the Washington Nationals, they are now willing to listen to trade offers for their all-star outfielder, Juan Soto, after he rejected their latest contract extension. Soto reportedly turned down a 15-year, $440 million deal, which would have been the largest contract in baseball history. Soto isn't slated to become a free agent until 2024. And the Midland Rockhounds came into their game tonight in a tied series with Frisco alternating wins and losses with the Rough Riders. The Hounds exploded at the plate tonight. These two teams will wrap the series up after the Rockhounds' 14-2 win. That will wrap up tomorrow at 6.05 p.m. All right, the West Texas Warbirds playing in their final game of the season against the Dallas Prime, trying to maintain their all-time undefeated record. Wideout Jordan Gandy, he was in a special zone tonight, scoring the first points of the game on this touchdown grab. He was left wide open. Later in the quarter, a shorter field. Gandy gets big. He snatches his second touchdown in the opening quarter, and he's looking for another ring. Yeah, he's definitely doing his part to earn another. Gorbitz, though, they were great on offense, but they were locking it down on defense. Joseph Newtall Jr. snagging a pick for the Warbirds, setting up a field goal. Dallas never got comfy in the pocket. Trayvon John forces the fumble, and Benjamin Duhon jumps all over for the takeaway. Defense was hopping all over the place. And Ascente Hill Sr. 
He was a problem grabbing dudes left and right. One of the many big tackles. It got a little bit chippy at the end, but the Warbirds dominate again. They end their second season just like their first one last year, undefeated and champions again. All right, we're back with something cool, focusing on cool things happening outside the lines of sports games. This week, we had a rarity, long-awaited justice, 110 years after the fact. Now, bear with me here while I tell you the story of former Olympian Jim Thorpe. Thorpe was the first Native American to ever win an Olympic gold medal when he won the decathlon and pentathlon during the 1912 Games in Stockholm. However, a year later, the International Olympic Committee found out Thorpe played minor league baseball in 1909 and 1910, earning $2 a game. The strict amateur rules back then made Thorpe ineligible to compete, and he was then stripped of his gold medals for being considered a professional athlete. Well, earlier this week, about 110 years later, Thorpe was finally restored as the official gold medal winner nearly 70 years after his death. Rob, if this isn't something cool, I don't know what is. Just a terrific story. I concur, Avi. And as I was learning more about Jim Thorpe, I have a little fun fact. Apparently, when Thorpe initially won those events, King Gustav V of Sweden said, Sir, you are the greatest athlete of the world. He is one of the all-time legends, and the fact that it took over a century to finally get justice. Better late than never, but uh, really cool for Mr. Thorpe as he gets the recognition that he has earned. Absolutely agree. Thank you so much, Avi. That will not take place under my watch at this church. Every person who comes on these grounds will know that they are safe, that they are protected, and that they are not alone. A rise in violent crimes is prompting more people to take self-defense classes, and experts say being ready is the best defense. We take a look at recent criminal cases where self-defense saved a life. Got my hair, got my head. Introducing new One A Day Multi Plus, a complete multivitamin, plus an extra boost of support for your immunity, brain, and hair, skin, and nails. New One A Day Multi Plus. GMC Sierra. Premium and capable. That's professional grade. Step up to GMC with 0% financing on these GMC models. Visit your premium basin GMC dealer. This is what people with eczema said about how their skin feels. When it comes to our skin, what if it could feel differently? Say hello to Opsalura for the treatment of mild to moderate eczema. Opsalura is a steroid-free cream proven to help clear skin and significantly reduce itch. Do not start Opsalura if you have any infection as it may lower your ability to fight them. Tell your doctor if you are being treated for an infection, have TB, or have been in close contact with someone with TB, have had hepatitis B or C. Serious lung infections, skin cancer, blood clots, and low blood cell counts have been reported with Opsalura. In patients taking JAK inhibitors, serious infections, increased risk of death, lymphoma, other cancers, immune system problems, and major cardiovascular events have occurred. The most common side effect is pain and swelling in the nose or throat. It's a one-of-a-kind cream. So what could that mean for your skin? Ask your dermatologist about Opsalura. AMID is the Basin's first television station from 1953 until now and beyond. We're always first, always accurate, and always proud to call the Basin home. Watch ABC Big 2 News. Well, new at 10, increasingly Americans are taking matters into their own hands in dangerous and violent situations. It's prompting the question, when should you fight? ABC's Evan Lambert shows us some recent and prominent examples where self-defense proved to be life-saving. We want to see Mr. Alba acquitted. From a deadly confrontation at a New York bodega 
to a Florida man using an AK-47 to chase away would-be home invaders. Is the homeowner going to be charged for shooting at these people? Absolutely not. Increasingly, Americans taking matters into their own hands in these dangerous situations, prompting the question, when should you fight? If you're being mugged and they are strictly after your purse, your valuables, you need to give those up and quickly. But if you're being attacked and you're fearful of serious injury or for your life, at that point, you need to take the offensive. These concerns come as some of the most heinous crimes have surged across the country in recent years. The FBI reporting violent crime was up 4.6 percent from 2019 to 2020. That's the last year we have complete data for. But what's most concerning are homicide numbers in some cities. In New York, homicides up 5 percent, and L.A. saw an increase of 12 percent. In D.C., right here in the nation's capital, year over year, homicides up 14 percent. In some communities across the country, this sense of insecurity driving people to train themselves. Like here in Augusta, Georgia, where Pastor Gregory Fuller is putting his congregation through gun safety and women's self-defense classes. Some person said that they felt harassed, some person said that they felt um, threatened and that kind of thing. That will not take place under my watch at this church. Every person who comes on these grounds will know that they are safe, that they are protected, and that they are not alone. And that was Evan Lambert reporting. Experts he spoke with say don't go into these situations blind. Taking a self-defense course to learn what you need to know is a good way to be ready. And coming up, new movies are taking the weekend box office by storm tonight. From a family feature to a sleepy southern murder mystery, we head to the movies with resident movie critic Dean Richards right after this break. And as we head to that break, a reminder that if you see news happening, share your videos and photos on social media with us. Make sure you use the hashtag ABC Big 2 News. And if you haven't done it yet, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We are ABC Big 2 News. Get ready for your day with meteorologist Ryan DePhillips. Being the new face of Don't Mess With Texas comes with a lot of responsibility. Thanks. Everybody loves me here. I can't wait to go home. I just want to help keep Texas clean and maybe spice some things up around here. Litter, Joe. Don't mess with Texas means don't litter. A new Chevy is the smart way to hit the open road this summer. The smart way to road trip and seek new adventures. Go a little farther this summer in a new Chevy. Find new get up and go. Find new roads. Enjoy the open road. Well-qualified buyers get 2.49% financing on all 2022 Silverado 1500 pickups. Chevy drives Texas. Find new roads. A Culligan high-efficiency water softener saves money on salt, detergents, and cleaning supplies. And time spent cleaning. Get softer on your water and wallet. Culligan, the only water that comes with a van. At USAA, we've been called too exclusive, because we only serve those who honorably serve. All ranks, all branches, and their eligible family members. Yep, that is exclusive, and we're fine with that. Fueling our cars, our homes, and our local economy, gas, oil, and electricity are all powering the Permian. I'm Matt Fonz. Watch my reports every Wednesday night at 6 and 10. Watch Powering the Permian every Wednesday night on ABC Big 2 News. Are you looking for a job in the fast-paced world of news? ABC Big 2 is currently hiring for the following positions. Qualified applicants, head over to yourbasin.com and click on Work For Us under the Jobs tab. Trending tonight, the weekend box office. There are new releases that are faring well tonight. For the family this weekend, there's Paws of Fury, The Legend of Hank, an animated spoof on the 1974 classic Blazing Saddles. Among new releases, there's the Reese Witherspoon produced drama Where the Crawdad Sinks. Here's Dean Richards with his movie critic review. 
Who knew an evil army could go through so many beams? <laughs> For the family this weekend, there's Paws of Fury, The Legend of Hank, an animated spoof of the 1974 classic Blazing Saddles. The Mel Brooks comedy dealt with a black sheriff in a white western town. This time, the story is about dogs and cats trying to get along. The movie also takes plenty of inspiration from the Kung Fu Panda franchise. Try to forget that it's a satire of one of the greatest comedies ever, and it doesn't compare. But if you forget that, you're left with a harmless enough movie for the little ones and a Dean's List C. Also new this week is the story adapted from the Delia Owens novel, Where the Crawdad Sings. It's the story of a young girl, played by Daisy Edgar Jones, who grew up alone on the bayou, now being put on trial for murder. It's a sleepy southern mystery full of romance, the message of the resilience of women, and a Dean's List B+. And finally, Oscar winner Leslie Manville is a London housekeeper, and Mrs. Harris goes to Paris. She's the ultimate optimist who always thinks that something good is going to happen. After a series of devastating news, she still tries to find a silver lining by deciding to buy an expensive Parisian designer dress to treat herself. It's a simple film with a feel-good message about finding some beauty where only the ugly exists, something we could all use some of right now. And another Dean's List B+. Always a good time to sit back and watch a movie on the big screen. We'll be right back. Now known as one of the best law schools in America. It started out as a place where men were trained for the Christian ministry. This Ivy League university hasn't completely forgotten its roots. The intersection of Christianity and the law is just so important. How faith is still a part of college life at Harvard. It's been incredibly encouraging for me, uh, being involved with Christian Union and small group. On the 700 Club Monday. Hey folks, Larry Hook at All-American Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram of Odessa. We're having our Make This the Summer event. You gotta come see us. Come check out the brand new 2022 Ram 1500 Quad Cab for only $43,949 or just $479 a month. That's for the savings of nearly $7,000 of MSRP. And we have several in stock along with a new 1500 Warlock Quad Cab and several crew cabs. So come take your pick and test drive one today before they're all gone. We're hungry for your business. And remember folks, when LED dealers say no, All-American Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram of Odessa says yes. Why don't we try that again? Mr. Rhodes. Here's to keep you safe on these roads. What did I do wrong? Two words. Cross walk. Oh. Whoa! But first, say hello to my little friend. The walk signal? The crosswalk. The signal. Look left, look right, look left. Doesn't it look good in stripes? Yeah. Welcome back, celebrity family feud, everybody. Let's get it on. Celebrity Family Feud is all new. This is my dream come true. Where Hollywood's best get put to the test. Got a good one for you tonight. Celebrity Family Feud, all new on ABC. AMID is the Basin's first television station. From 1953 until now and beyond. We're always first, always accurate, and always proud to call the Basin home. Watch ABC Big 2 News. Well, let's take one let's look at that seven-day forecast and pretty much uh, for all, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven days, triple-digit heat. That's like, how many numbers? I can't even do the math, but a lot of heat numbers in the triple digits, 100 degrees tomorrow. And the highest this week is going to be Tuesday, sitting at 105. It's going to be very hot. And then if you want to say that we cool down Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, then we do by just like a couple of degrees. Rob and Avi, I asked for this heat. I said I wanted it, and it's here. And I'm excited, but I'm kind of like, it's a little bit hot, but I don't want to complain because I'm excited. You, you ever heard the expression in baseball, these guys are throwing heat? Well, the yeah. reason is, whenever they have the radar gun, they show how fast they are, they're going to show all those numbers that you just said, 100, 102, 101, that's throwing heat right there. That's a seven-day forecast throwing heat right there. That's one way to look at it. I just want to draw angry faces on all those suns right there. <laughs> no, don't. Sunglasses and stuff. <laughs> really mad Turning back faces. to a kid, I never changed. <laughs> 
Well, that's all the time we have for news tonight. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you, we'll see you back here tomorrow night at 10 o'clock. Good night.